it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Yo ho ho! Here we are with chapter 9, lesson number 3, definite integrals, or area under a curve. First of all, before we start with this, let's rewind. Think back to differentiation. What is the whole point in differentiation? You got it. Differentiation is used to find the gradient of a curve at a certain point. That is the main purpose of differentiation. Integration as well also has a main purpose, and the purpose of integration is to find the area under a curve, between the curve and the y-axis, between x equals a and x equals b. In other words, you want to find this area here. So there's your function, there is your curve, and you want to find the area between x equals a and x equals b. So you can use integration to find this area. How do you do that? Well, the area enclosed by y equals f of x and the x-axis here is found by integrating your function and using these limits, a and b. So, let's try some examples of that. Example number one. Write down the integral associated with the shaded area. So looking at this example here, how would you work out the area enclosed by this line here, y equals x plus 2, and the x-axis between 3 and 7? Perfectly right. Good. All you'd want to do is you would have the area equals, you would integrate x plus 2, you're integrating your function, and you've got these limits. The lower limit is going to be 3, so that goes down there at the bottom, and 7 would be the upper limit, so you'd have a 7 at the top. In a few examples time, I'll show you how you'd work that out. Okay, but just now, it's just working out how you would get the area. Example 2, write down the integral associated with, again, the shaded area. So here is your function, y equals sine x. You've got this shaded area here, and we're wanting to work out the area between the curve, the x-axis, and pi over 2 and pi. So to do that, again, you need to integrate your function. So the area is going to be the integral of sine x, and the upper limit this time is going to be pi, and the lower limit is going to be pi over 2. Well done if you got that right. Woo! Write down the integral associated for example 3 uh, with this shaded area here. So again, you've got the line y, x plus y equals 5. So to get that one, well really we need to first of all to work out what the limits would be. Obviously here we can see that's going to be 0, uh, but we need to work out this point as well. How would you do that? What would you do, Madiha? Perfectly right, you'd set y equal to 0, because you know that point there is going to be like 2, 0, or 3, 0, or 4, and a half, 0. Okay, the y value will be 0. So you can say when y equals 0, and then just set that, x plus y equals 5, substitute in y to be 0. So x plus 0 is going to be equal to 5, meaning then that x is going to be 5. So that point there will be 5, 0. We need our equation in the form of y equals before we can integrate it. So rearranging that, we've got x plus y equals 5. Rearranging it, we get y equals 5 minus x, which means then your function is going to be 5 minus x. So you want to integrate that. And once again, you would use your limits. The upper limit is going to be 5, because that is that point right here. And the lower limit, you know, is just going to be 0, looking at that graph. So that is what you would have. Let's do one more example like that. Write down the integral associated with the shaded area. So here is your curve. You've got y equals the square root of x. Obviously, we're wanting to work out the area between x equals 1. And over here, well, it's y equals 3. But what we need to do is we need to find the x value. So how could you work out the x value here? What would you do, Mary Lou? Brilliant. Substitution again. We know y equals the square root of x, and we know if y is 3, then you could easily work out the value of x. So using some steps substitution, if y equals 3, you can say that 3 would equal the square root of x. If you square both sides, then x uh, would equal 3 squared. Just writing that down. x equals 3 squared, so x would be 9. Meaning then that this point here, just up here, would be 9, 3. 
So we know the x values then would be 1 and 9 that we would use. So to find that area, again, you would integrate your functions. So we're integrating the square root of x. And the limits we would have, the lower limit is going to be 1. And the upper limit, we just found out, it was 9. Excellent. But how do we actually work this out? How would you work it out? How do you get the area? What do you do? Well, let me tell you in the next page. So how do we work out that area? Well, these bits here, okay, when you're integrating and you've got a number at the bottom and a number at the top, well, it's known as a definite integral. And these numbers here, which I've been referring to, are known as limits. A is the lower limit, which I've been saying, and B is the upper limit, it's the larger number. When dealing with a definite integral as well, whenever you integrate, you are not going to have a plus C on the end. Okay, so you always use a plus C unless you have limits. In order to work out the area then, what you do is you integrate to your function, you then substitute in your limits, and you subtract the upper limit when you sub that in from the, uh, subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. So, you would integrate f of x, if you did that, it's going to use capital F to show that's as integrated it. You would write it out with square brackets, and then you put in your limits just at the side. Then what you do is you sub in A in place of X, you sub in B in place of X, and you would have the upper limit minus the lower limit, as it says there, where capital F of X is going to be the integral of your function. Let's try an example then. So, example five, calculate the shaded area. So once again, here is our function y equals x plus 2. We want to work out the area between 3 and 7. So what do you do? Yes, you integrate. So we're integrating. Look at the limits. We've got 3 and we've got 7. 3 is the lower limit, so it goes at the bottom. 7 is the upper limit, so that goes at the top. What you then do is you integrate that. Whenever you integrate and you have limits, use your square brackets. So integrate x plus 2 and put it in square brackets. That will go to x squared over 2, and that will become 2x. The limits keep them just at the side, so the limit, upper limit is 7 and the lower limit is 3. As I said in the last page, what you then do is you substitute your limits in. So we replace x with 7, and we also replace x with 3. So upper limit minus the lower limit. So instead of x squared, we'd have 7 squared over 2. Plus, instead of 2x, we'd have 2 times 7 because we're just subbing in the 7, minus, and then do the same thing with 3. If you work that out, 7 squared gives you 49, divided by 2 will give you 24 and a half, and uh, that becomes plus 14. If you square that, divide by 2, you get 4 and a half, and then that will become plus 6. Simplify that, then you get 38 and a half minus 10 and a half, which will then give you 28. We don't know what the units are, so we just write 28 squared units and that will be your answer. Example six. Calculate, again, the shaded area. We have y equals five minus x. How would you do that? What would you do, Andrew? Integrate, you got it. So you integrate the five minus x. We integrate our function. Remember, it has to be in the form of y equals. So integrating that, and again, put in your limits. The lower limit is going to be zero, and your upper limit is going to be 5. So we integrate between 0 and 5. Integrate, bring in the square brackets. So we've got our square brackets here. You integrate 5, you get 5x. Integrate x, you get x squared over 2, and we will be subtracting. The limits, keep them just as they are, put them outside. What you then do is substitute them in. So sub in the 5 in place of x, then you'd have minus, and substitute in the 0 in place of x. So that will give you 5 times 5, minus 5 squared over 2, minus, and then the other bracket, subbing in 0, you'd have 5 times 0, minus 0 squared over 2. Just work that out, you'd have 25 minus 12 and a half, minus, this just becomes 0, which will give you 12.5 squared units. And that's your answer. Example number 7, calculate the shaded area once again. So how would you do this? Yes, everybody's saying it. You would integrate uh, your limits this time. Here you've got a 3, you've got a 1, and you've got a 9. What would you be using? Good, the 1 and the 9. Brilliant. So integrate that. We're integrating the square root of x. The limits, we have 1 and we have 9. So integrate that. Bring in the square brackets. 
Yes, you're perfectly right. Well done, you can't integrate whenever you have the square root sign. So you have to rewrite that first of all. So keep it just as it is, and then you can integrate from there. So rewrite that as integrating between one and nine and would have x to the power of a half. Well spotted, Olivia. After that, you can then integrate. So add one to the power, divide by the new power, will give us then x to the power of three over two and divide by three over two. Again, we're integrating so we can keep the square brackets. It's going to be between one and nine. You can then, if you think, well, I'm dividing by a fraction, turn the fraction upside down and multiply by that. So it would be x to the power of three over two. You're multiplying though by the two over three. So two is in the top, three is in the bottom. And we've got the limits nine and one. From there, you want to sub in the limits, but if you do that, well, nine to the power of three over two, you might want to rethink how you do that. So you may want to write it with your square root signs first of all. It's entirely up to you. You might be absolutely fine working out nine to the power of three over two. Uh, to make it slightly easier, the two is in the bottom, so that's the root, so it's the square root, and then the three's in the top, that's the power, so it'd be the square root of x, and then cubed. From there, I will substitute in those limits. Doing that then, I would have two times, and then that becomes the square root of nine cubed over three, which we've got here. Sub in one as well, so it's two times the square root of one cubed over three. Work them out. You can use as many lines as you like for this, but if you work that out, that becomes two times, well, the square root of nine is three, cube that, three times three times three, it's 27 over three minus, uh, that would just give us one, and it would become two thirds as it is there. Work that out, you'd end up with 18 minus two thirds, which if you had 18 and you took two thirds away, you'd have 17 and one third remaining. So that would be your area. Again, we don't have limits, uh, units, so you just write down squared units. Example number eight. There is an area between the line y equals x, the x axis, and the lines x equals one and x equals three. Show this area in a diagram, and then calculate the area using integration. So the first thing you probably want to think is, go off to the side, do a wee sketch. So showing the area. So you've got obviously an x-axis and a y-axis. The line y equals x, well, if x and y are the same, then that would be the point one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. So you've really got that line going up at 45 degrees. That's the line y equals x. You'd also have the lines x equals one and x equals three. So there are just your vertical lines. So you've got x equals one and x equals three drawn in. And it's saying there's an area between that line y equals x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals one and x equals three. So it's talking about this area that is just in here. How would you then calculate the area? Well, as it says there, yes, you just use integration. So from there, you want to integrate. Uh, what would you be integrating? Good, you're integrating x. It's the function uh, y equals x, we just integrate x, and your limits would be one and three, perfect. What goes at the top, one or three, or does it matter? Good, upper limit's going to be three, so that goes at the top. Lower la limit is going to be one, so that is what you're integrating. Integrating x, you would end up with x squared over two, and your limits would be three and one. From there, substitute in, so replace x with three, so we get three squared over two. Replace x with one, we'd have one squared over two, and remember you are subtracting upper minus lower. Work that out, that would give us nine over two, which is 4.5, minus, that would just be a half, 0 0.5. Work that out, and you would just have four. And that would be your answer. Example nine. Calculate the area enclosed between the curve y equals four minus x squared, and the y and the x axis. So that is the curve there, y equals four minus x squared, and you've got your x-axis, so it's wanting this area that is in here. So how would you go about doing that? Well, obviously you would integrate, okay? We're going to be integrating whatever y is equal to, so that's four minus x squared, but to work out the area, you need your limits. So how would you get the limits? What would you do for that? Well done, James, perfect. You would again use substitution. So if you substitute in, what would you sub in, James? 
Good, y equals zero, because you're wanting to find the point that this curve crosses the x-axis. And for that, y would be equal to zero. So, cross crosses or cuts the x-axis when y is zero. So in your function here, just replace y with zero. So zero would equal the four minus x squared. In other words, x squared would equal four, and x would then be two or negative two. So we've got these two values. So you know this point here would be negative two, and this point here is two. To work out the area then, you integrate. We're integrating our function between two and negative two. Doing that, if you integrate four, it goes to four x. Integrate x squared, that will go to x cubed over three. Again, you're bringing in your square brackets, and we have our limits of two and negative two. After that, just sub in, so you've got upper minus lower, so sub in the two, so four times two minus two cubed over three, minus, and sub in negative two, four times negative two minus negative two cubed over three. That is what you would get. From there, if you work that out, that would give you uh, eight minus eight over three, minus, and then this here would become a negative eight, plus, and then eight over three. If we get rid of the brackets there, well, you've got an eight, then you're also adding another eight, so it's eight add eight. You've got the negative eight over three, you'd be taking away another eight over three, so you can rewrite this as that, giving you 16 minus 16 over three, which would then become 10 and two thirds. That will be your answer for number nine. Let's do one last one, example number 10. Let's go to double figures. Find the positive integer m for which when you integrate one plus two x between one and m, you will end up with an answer of four. How do you do this one? Well, first of all, it's saying if you integrate one plus two x between one and m, let's do that then. So if you integrate that, well, you know if you integrate one plus two x with respect to x, you will end up with x plus, that become two x squared over two, in other words, just x squared, because the twos will cancel. Uh, after that, well, we've got m and we've got 1 as our limits. So just sub them in. So if you do that, replace x with m, then minus, and replace x with 1, which will give us m plus m squared minus 1 plus 1 squared. Get rid of the brackets there. You'd have m plus m squared minus 2. Rearrange that into the form of your quadratic. Whenever you get your x squared, x and a number, write it in that form. So here, it's obviously m and m squared and a number. So write it as m squared plus m minus 2. We're wanting to work out the value, though, of m, for which, when we integrate that, well, it's equal to 4. So integrating this, well, if we integrate it, we get m squared plus m minus 2. And we know that that is equal to 4. So let's set that equal to 4. So m squared plus m minus two must be equal to four. From there, how'd you solve to find m? Good, subtract four from both sides, remove the four over. So you'd have m squared plus m minus six equals zero. To find m now, factorize. Good, so you'd have m plus three and then m minus two if you factorize. Uh, meaning then that m would be either negative three or two. Uh, both answers, everybody happy? No, why not happy? because it's a positive integer. It says here, find the positive integer m, which means then we can ignore this negative three, and we can say that since m is a positive integer, m must be equal to two. So that is how you would do that one. Try some of these questions on your own, and see how you get on. It's all to do with the definite integrals, and you've got your limits. You're working out the area under a curve. Try these questions. Any problems, just ask me in person, fire me an email, let me know, and I'll help you out. Good luck, enjoy.